With the soon to be released Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games for the Nintendo Switch, I thought it would be appropriate to list the 5 biggest things that you should definitely do within the game series if you are going to drop $60 and buy these games. Who knows, you might buy both versions or that sweet Nintendo Switch bundle and get yourself the Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu Nintendo Switch edition. So with that, let's jump right into this list and talk about the 5 things that you should really do while playing these games. You need to understand these games are based off of Generation 1, meaning the games can be easily beaten by 1 to 2 Pokemon. If you're able to acquire a psychic Pokemon, you will likely be able to roll through the game, as no Pokemon will be able to resist that, since there's no Dark Steel types that are serious challenges in Gen 1, with the exception of Magnemite and Magneton. But if they are remakes of Gen 1, then those Pokemon will rarely appear, and they won't be super high leveled or extremely challenging. But also, acquiring a really fast ground type Pokemon like Dugtrio and getting it with Earthquake will allow you to run through the game pretty easily as well. Pokemon like Coughing, Weezing, Grimer, Muck, Onix, Geodude, these are Pokemon you're going to consistently see throughout the game very, very often. They are extremely weak to ground types. Depending on your starter, again, Pikachu, you really only need three Pokemon to beat the game. So an Abra outside Cerulean City and a Diglett in the Diglett Tunnel. There you go. The second thing you're going to want to do is transfer over all your Pokemon Go Pokemon immediately. In many instances, you're not able to transfer your Pokemon to another game until you beat it or reach a certain point in the game. This is to prevent you from completely steamrolling the game with no challenge. But as soon as possible, you should definitely transfer over your Pokemon Go captures to prevent needless and excessive captures. Why are you taking the time out to capture a Pidgey or a Spearow or a Caterpie if you already have it on Pokemon Go? Hence, why you should definitely transfer over your library of Pokemon Go Pokemon and it will prevent your grinding and unnecessary captures. You will want to attempt to capture them all, of course. A low in variations will likely not count as extra Pokemon though needed to complete the decks because that's just how it goes. If there's a variation of a Pokemon, it's rarely required that you catch both the variations to complete that Pokemon in the decks. So once you capture all the Pokemon, you will be given a sweet diploma proving your accomplishment. And I promise you, you probably want to get that diploma so you can post it on Twitter, Facebook, and wherever else and get that sweet, sweet gamer cred. The next thing you're definitely going to want to do is pretty obvious and that's beat the game. You'd be surprised how many people give up on Pokemon and don't actually finish the game. In order to capture all the Pokemon, as aforementioned, catching them all is something you'll want to do, you're going to need uh, to beat the game if it's following the remaster and remake formula of the original Gen 1 Kanto. Mewtwo being locked away in a cave until you beat the game is one of the primary ones you're going to need to beat the game to capture. Unless you have it on Pokemon Go, but then again, we don't know when you're going to be able to transfer over your Pokemon Go Pokemon, so again, you might need to beat the game anyways, just to transfer your Pokemon. Hence, just beat the game. In the final cave of Kanto, you're also going to encounter very powerful Pokemon, if the remake again falls Gen 1 logic. Pokemon like Ditto, Kadabra, and Chansey, rare and powerful Pokemon that you will need to capture to catch them all, but they will also be there to help you get ready for competitive battles. You're definitely not going to want to miss out on these Pokemon, so ensure you beat the game and visit the cave outside Cerulean City. Finally, ready yourself for online battling. Once you've caught all the Pokemon, there will likely be little reason to trade outside of different movesets or perfect Pokemon, hence you need to ready yourself for online play. If there is a battle tower type of area in the game, you can obviously do that as end game content and that'll keep you going for a while, but player to player matches are much more challenging and long lasting in my experience. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, those are the five things that you're definitely going to want to do in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee when they do launch. Uh, these are just some ideas, some suggestions to keep the game from becoming stale, annoying, boring, and making you feel like you ultimately uh, spent $60 for a game that will only last you a few hours. So, if you guys enjoyed this list or you have something to add to it, leave me a like and a comment down below and tell me what you think people should do when they get Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. If you dislike this video, you can leave me a dislike and tell me what I can do better in the future. And you can always subscribe because I'm on the road to a million subscribers, so your subscription will help me get there. And hopefully I'll be holding that gold play button and you'll be there to see it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good gaming, God bless, and thanks for taking the time out to watch this video.